Hey there, Fletcher Maltings Overlanding here, and today I'm going to be talking about the Phoenix CL27R. This is a cool sort of combo spotlight lantern that has a ton of cool features, cool ways to mount it, and uh, it has a ton of uses for around camp if you're into camping, that kind of thing, or if you're looking for something to kind of keep in your vehicle that you could use in the event of a breakdown or, uh, you know, getting stuck on a trail or something like that. So again, in my audience, if you are an overlander or camper, this may be a great small footprint option for you for a number of uses. So if you want to learn more about the Phoenix CL27R, stay tuned. When I let you go, ooh, I just pulled you closer. Ooh, I can't understand where it came from, but you got it, my God. It, it began in the land of the sandstorm. I fought it, though I wanted it. All right, so let's kind of start by talking about what comes in the box. So of course you get the light itself. You also get a little uh, instruction manual, which is actually really nice because the light's pretty simple, but there are a couple tricky things and I'm gonna kind of walk you through those as far as how to switch between different modes from spotlight to flood and spotlight and flood or red light modes. I'm gonna show you all that stuff, but that is listed in this manual here. So if you get this and you don't wanna pull this video back up or something, you can always reference this little quick guide. So you get the light, you do get this little weird plastic thing. And at first I was like, what is this? What I think it is, is there's actually this remove before use thing that uh, lives between the battery and the light. So I'm sure to protect the battery in transit. And there's this little uh, open thing on the bottom here. And basically what I found was this little disc fits in there perfectly. So what I believe it is, is it is the turner to just make this as easy as possible to open it and then close it back up. Of course, you could use like a big flathead screwdriver or a quarter or something that you've got laying around, but it's nice that they provide that just to make opening that as easy as possible. Of course, you turn it to the left, lefty loosey, righty tighty to undo that. And then this piece of paper comes out. And then from that point on, your light is good to go and you're ready to use it. But again, you do need to make sure that you remove this thing before you operate the light. Now you also get a USB-C to USB-A charger here, which is kind of nice because most of my stuff runs off of that. So I can plug this into my truck, I can plug it into a power bank, I can plug it into a number of things and uh, charge this thing back up. And we're gonna talk about charging times and all that good stuff here in a second as well. Then you do get just an extra sort of gasket for your battery in here to kind of keep it waterproof and keep that seal tight. So if, you know, that ever breaks down or anything, it's kind of nice, they give you an extra. Probably gonna throw this in a drawer somewhere with my manual just so that if anything ever happens, I've got this extra. And then of course they give you a warranty card. It is kind of nice. They have a five year free repair warranty. So that's another thing that I really like about Phoenix is that their lights are really well made, but then they also back them up with a really nice warranty. So if anything happened in the first 15 days, they're just going to replace it. If it manufactured, if there's a manufacturer defect, uh, test it out when you first get it, make sure that everything works. If not, they will just replace it. But then for the next five years, they will repair it completely free. All right, so let's start off with form factor. One thing that I really like about this is that it's all inclusive. And what I mean by that is, you know, I've seen some lights that have sort of like a, an additional piece that goes on here that, that sort of nullifies the light and spreads it out and makes it more like a lantern. They've done that through their reflector in here so that that thing's not necessary. So there's no additional parts to carry. It's basically this, and that's what you get. And then this thing is the fully functional light. This thing would fit down in my drawers or wherever. It's very, very tough. It's made of really hard plastic, nice materials so that it's gonna be protected and it's gonna last for a long time. But again, really easy to store different places so that you don't have to worry about, you know, carrying a bunch of auxiliary pieces for it. And the fact that it charges off USB-C also makes it really easy to charge back up. All right, so let's talk through some specs here. This light will put out up to 1600 lumens. Now, obviously that's gonna depend on how high you turn it up. You do have an on off here and that will also turn up the brightness of the light. So again, the more you turn that up, the brighter it's gonna get, as you can see. Then with this other knob, you can dial in the color. So basically the warmth of the light. You can either make it really cold and white, or you can make it warmer and more orange. Just changes the color of the LEDs, and then you change your max brightness with this left one, and also turn it on and off. So a lot of uses and things like that for this would be, you know, if something were to happen on your vehicle, it is magnetic on the bottom here, which has got these little magnet images so you could stick this up to you know the bottom of your vehicle aim it where you need it to go and then you uh you know could work on your vehicle or fix a problem with your vehicle same with like camp cooking and things like that which is kind of what i'm envisioning this for is if i need some spotlight somewhere on my you know on my truck bed back here 
then I can just set this thing down, angle it where I need it to go, right? Illuminate the area that I want to work in. And, uh, and that's another use for it too. If you're night fishing, if you are shooting photos and it's too dark, if you want to get a night picture of your truck, you could do something like that. Um, if the power goes out in your house, you could use it for that kind of thing, right? So there's tons of uses for this thing, again, just because of its flexibility. So now as far as the lighting goes, when we turn this on, like I mentioned, this is gonna do your warmth, right? But then the way that you select what type of light output you want is with this big button here on the top. So basically what happens is if you hit it once, it goes into spotlight mode and you're gonna notice there, and sorry, I'm shining it in your eyes, I know. Uh, it's gonna direct a big LED right in the middle through sort of a focused beam. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you more of a spot type light. So after the spotlight style, if you hit the metal button again, it's gonna to go to both spotlight and lantern style. So again, we've still got that focused beam, but now we've got sort of a flood pattern as well. And then if you hit it a third time, it basically shuts off the center LED and the spotlight and just goes to a lantern mode. So if you don't want that bright, you know, sort of center light, you can go to this mode, which is just the lantern mode. So again, spotlight, both spot and flood, just flood. Those are your three options for the light. Now, here's another thing. If you turn this all the way off and you hold this top button, that's how you get red light mode. So if you want to protect your night vision, you know, if you just want to check something out really quick on the bed of your truck or, you know, if you're walking around camp and you don't want to ruin your night vision, you can just hold this button on the top for a second and it will turn on the red light mode, which is really nice. Now, if you tap this again, it's going to put it in flashing mode. I don't know if you were in distress or something, you could use that. Tap it again, it's going to go back to full. If you hold it for about a second, then it's going to go off. So basically, this is your toggle for all your different modes on off for the white and yellow light, adjustment for temperature. And then again, if you hold this for just a second, it's gonna turn on your red light mode. But so those are basically the functions of the light and how you control it. Now, as far as runtime goes, this will run up to 285 hours on a charge. When you do need to charge it, it takes about two and a half hours from dead to full. So just FYI, when you're charging it off USB-C, it's gonna take about two and a half hours to charge, but then once you do that, you've got up to 285 hours. So what I like about that is I'm literally just gonna keep it in my truck and use it and use it. And then when I notice that it starts to get dead, which it does have battery indicators up here on top of it, when all four are lit up, then that means you're at 100%, and then it'll show you 25% intervals as it goes down. When I notice that it starts to get down towards maybe two, uh, you know, lights or 50%, then the next time I'm driving somewhere, I'll just plug it into USB-C in my truck, charge it for a couple hours while on the trail, and then throw it back in my drawers, and then I'm good to go until it gets lower in power again. Now, as far as dimensions goes, it is about 3.61 inches across and 3.61 inches tall. So it is a square and it's about one and a half inches thick. So just FYI, if you're looking for something to fit into your gear, hopefully those dimensions help you a little bit. Now, another option is if it did die, let's say that this was your main light or you really love this light and it's the only one that you bring and you get to camp and it's dead. You can run it while it's charging. It will allow for concurrent charging while in use. So you could just plug it in by the USB-C which is just right here on the side, and then you could still operate it. So again, just plug it in while you're using it so that you can charge it up and you can run it while it's charging. And then after a couple hours, it's gonna be back to full and you can run it off the battery again. All right, guys, so as you saw, that was the Phoenix CL27R. Uh, this thing is super cool. I love the magnetic function of it. I love the quarter 20 on the bottom of it. Again, I've got camera mounts all over my truck, so I may be a bit of an oddity in that regard, but I do have ways to mount this all over my truck, under my awning, that kind of thing, that make it really handy. So again, if you're looking for something that is pretty small footprint, that is really well built, that has a built-in battery and lasts for up to 285 hours, I think this is a good option. Um, so hopefully that was helpful for you. There will be a link in the description down below to this light. So if you're looking for it, it's about 85 bucks. Um, but again, there'll be a link right down there in the description. Sometimes they go on sale too, so make sure to check that. Also in the description below will be links to all my social channels. So wherever you wanna come hang out, I'd love to have you. Also below is a link to my website where I've got funny overlanding camping themed patches and stickers. Things like don't burn your wiener and it's a hot dog or I hate people so I camp, that kind of thing. So if you're into kind of funny dad joke style patches and stickers, there may be something down there that you like. So definitely check that out as well. There's also a join button below this video. Uh, that's just sort of a passive way to support the channel and it also gets you early access to the videos. So if you wanna kind of see them before anybody else, that's a cool way to do that. If you want a more active way to be involved with all things overlanding, there's a link to my Patreon group down below too. Uh, we do a once a month Zoom call. We've got a 24 seven Discord where we all kind of chat about our rigs and our cars and that sort of thing. So again, if you're into overlanding and camping, you wanna be involved in a more active way and sort of chat live, 
that's a good way to do it. And then of course, last but not least, there's the Newbie Overlanders Facebook group, totally free to join, uh, but tons of awesome members in there, different from the big groups, no bullying, anything like that. So again, if you're looking for a cool place to learn more about overlanding, that may be a good place to start. But again, thanks so much for watching, have a good one, and we'll see you next time.